A few days ago, I sent out a package. Today, I got a package back. Let's talk about the SJ Pour Challenge. Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome to Homebrew Wednesday. Cheer. Cheers. Oh. I'm sorry. Um, this is a store bought. But I have a homebrew coming up in a few minutes. You'll just wait and see. It's coming up. I'm going to pour it right on the line, but this is all I've got right now, so just bear with me. Cheers. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Now, this is how the SJ Pour challenge works. SJ Pour is his YouTube channel name, and he invented the Homebrew Wednesday concept. He also organized the SJ Pour beer challenge, right? Basically, in your country, you brew your best beer. You brew your own best beer that you can brew, one that you think is worthy of a challenge like this. Okay? No no guidelines, nothing. Right? You brew that up. And then you send it to a hub in your country, which has been pre-organized. This is a big thing. I mean, this is this is a worldwide organized thing. It's, it's amazing how they did this. So you send it to your country, your hub in your country, the package of your beers. Okay, a bunch of your beers go into a box, whoosh, off they go. A few days later, you get a box. Here it is, we're gonna open this box. And this box contains all the other beers from all the other people that contributed to this challenge. So now I've got beers from all over Canada in this box that I have to try and drink and rate and score. I'm not a beer reviewer, so I'll do my best. And everyone else has to do the same, right? And then when uh, the, the results are in, the top three people, the top three beers in the country, go on to the finals, which is worldwide. All the other countries have top three people. And those, all those top three people go into a final competition where they get sent more beers, so if I make it into the top three, I get sent more beers from all over the world, and I have to taste them and, and you know rate them. It's all in fun. It's a worldwide beer competition slash challenge because you know what? All of us home brewers are not treating this as a competition. I don't, I'm not, anyways. I'm going to describe to you how I, the experience I had with doing my home brew, uh, SJ Pour. Beer. I originally brewed it months ago, thinking, oh, I got lots of time. I can brew it, and I'll bottle it. It'll carbonate, and it'll be good, and it'll age, and everything else. Well, it didn't work out that way. So I scrapped the, that all. I drank the beers, you know, got rid of them, basically. And I said, I'm going to brew this again, and I'm going to add something to it. So I brewed the same beer, but I added a grain to it. That I thought was going to improve the quality of the beer. So I did that, but I was running out of time. So basically, I had to keg the beer after it was fermented and carbonate it in the keg and get that all carved up and then bottle it from the keg. And that's what I did. Let's take a look and see how I, how I did this. Okay, so we got our little bottle pressurizer filler gadget, okay? Got that thing there and a little piece of tubing to go along with it. So I'm just going to, I've already pre-measured this. I'm just going to put that on that like that. We've got that all set up there. All right, we've got a piece of tubing with a keg, uh, you know, fill uh, connector on each end of it. So it's like a little jumper cable thing. We've got that. All right, the tube is old, but I've sanitized it and washed it with every single detergent I own. So it's fine. We have a beer bottle that's been sanitized and a cap. So all these things would be sanitized and that's what you've got. So let's move these out of the way. So I've got to get into my freezer, or my kegerator, keg keezer, whatever you want to call it. And I've got my beer in here in a keg. And let's just take that off. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong. Thing. Okay, so put that on there. 
gas line has to go onto your, of course, onto your beer. And the little jumper goes onto your fill line. Okay, and we're all set to go. Grab our bottle. This is the way I did this. Grab our gadget. Screw that onto the sanitized. Well, everything's got to be sanitized, of course. You know that. Okay, and then we put our fill line onto the connector. And of course, it starts to fill up, but it won't continue to fill up because the pressure builds in the bottle and it equalizes, and then the bottle gets hard. This is a plastic bottle. Okay, this is just for demonstration purposes. And then once, it's, once it stops, you gotta wait, gotta wait um, 30 seconds or so till it, the pressure gets equal. And then, and I'm not sure if you can see that, I tried to set up my halogen uh, lamp, which is old and hard to set up and cumbersome, and now I can smell something burning. But anyways, <laughs> Um, now you slowly release. You slowly release the. Very slowly release it. It takes a while, and the, the longer you, the more patient you are, the better your results will be. Okay, now this is messy. It can get messy. You see? That's why you would probably want to do this in a, like a, a tray or something like that. Okay, once you get that, you take your, your line off and now you've got a fully bottled beer. Now what you want to do, this is where the, the what, what I think is magic happens. Now, I've seen videos on YouTube where they fill it with CO2 first, the bottle with CO2 first, so that there's nothing but CO2 inside the bottle, okay? And then they put the beer in. I don't think that's necessary. I think that even though there's oxygen inside the bottle, when you're putting your beer in, it's going to slowly push out the oxygen. You're not shaking it. You're not forcing the oxygen into the beer. Um, you're pushing the oxygen slowly out of the bottle, and now all there is in here is beer. No oxygen, just carbonated uh, beer. Uh, as long as you're not shaking it while you're doing this, you're not forcing any, any foreign ox oxygen into the beer. So now, when you remove this, okay, and of course I did 13 bottles of this, so you know, I have to do one after another. You remove it, and you let the beer drain out of the tubing there. Because what you want is you want the least amount amount of airspace in the top. Whoops, in the top here, because now that is oxygen in the top here, because it just came in. When I pulled this out, it drew in air from the outside, and that is oxygen. So now I could just cap this. I could just cap it and hope that the oxygen is not going to affect the beer. Or I could squeeze the bottle until we get, and then put the cap on, but then you're going to lose a little bit of carbonation. So what I did, after I filled all my bottles, and I'll just set this aside, I filled all the bottles, I put them aside, I put the caps on. I'm just going to grab my gas line here. This is my gas line. I took this tubing off, which is easier than said than done sometimes. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Grab my bottle. Screw this thing back on. This is only if you're going to be transporting it and worrying about it being jostled around and, and, and shook it, shook it up. Put on your gas line. Okay. And then you purge. And that gets rid of all the oxygen, replaces it with CO2. Take that off. Take that off. You put on your, 
your sanitized cap. And there you have a perfectly bottled beer from a keg with no oxygen, no worries about oxygenation. And we're going to actually put this in the fridge. And at the end of this video, we're going to pour this and have a go at it, see what it tastes like. All right, so this is where it really gets homebrew related. This is the one I, one of the ones I bottled three days ago. I want to thank Sam. Um, I was lucky enough not to have to send out my beers to the hub. He actually came and picked them up. In fact, he drove all over the place to get some of our beers from Ontario. And I want to thank Sam for that a, a wonderful guy. And cheers to you, my friend. Thank you very much. I didn't have to pay shipping to get my beers out to the hub. He actually came and picked them up right at my house. Awesome stuff. And a few other guys met over here too from Ontario. And we, you know, sort of stood around and talked for a little while. And uh, we gave him our beers and he drove away. And he's, it was like three days ago, got my box of beers from all over Canada. That's efficiency. Beautiful stuff. Thank you, sir. Awesome. I did this exactly the way I just showed you. Um, in fact, this is the exact beer that I did on the video you just saw. I shook it around a little bit to simulate, you know, transportation and, and being jostled around. Let's see what we've got. Didn't hiss very much. Uh oh. All right, we're not too bad. Ah, yeah, geez. Not a lot of head on that thing, but a little bit, about a one finger, if you got small hands. So that's the way it worked out, bottling from the keg. So all I've got, that's the best, best I could do. Cheers. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. I'm not allowed to say anything about it. <laughs> I like it. All right, so that's what it looks like. Now you have the cats out of the bag. Let's get this thing open and see what we've got. I think I need a new blade on this knife. <laughs> This is why I don't unbox things usually. There we go. All right. Packaging material. Oh, look at all the beers. Oh yeah. That one came out of the bag. That one looks like one of mine. Nope, that's got a Canadian thing on it. I didn't put that on mine. So that one's a plastic too. See, there you go. Yeah. There's just a whole box of beers in here. Look at this, it's like Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Oh yeah, there's, there's tons. Like, there's, like I, can, I can go on and on pulling these things out of the bottom. But what I gotta do really is take these out and put them in the fridge standing up and let them settle. I can't drink them right now. That plastic one feels nice and hard. That means it's good and carbonated, so that's good. Yeah. Let's see what we've got. That one's wrapped in a sock. Now that's a. <laughs> hey, is there two of these? I could wear that. Yeah. There you go. What else have we got in here? That's a good idea. I never thought of a sock. Another one there. A lot of bubble wrap stuff here. Oh, what's that one? That's a big one oh, down there. Somebody really went out all out. Oh, there we go. There's one there. So, I'm probably, I'm not going to get around to all of these. People are going to be like, oh, here, hang on. Oh, we got that one again. What's that one? Oh. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, there's there's lots in here. There's a big one down here. There's a big big one down there. So there's lots of beers in here. I'm not gonna pull them all out. Probably missed a couple. But there you go. 
There's one there. That one's got electrical tape. I, hey, I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Hellman's mayonnaise are on sale for a dollar. All right. So that's what I've got. I've got to put those in the fridge. I'm going to unwrap all those and put them in the fridge and let them settle out. And then I got to start reviewing them and, uh, and having some fun tasting other people's beers. It's just fun. It's, it's, I don't care if I win, lose, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. It just, you know, it's, it's all about, see now I got my over, it, it didn't have a lot of head on it, but it kept a cap on it. So mine's doing okay. I'm not going to say anything else about it. All right, I want to thank our sponsors because this couldn't have happened without you guys. Thank you. Cheers. It is time. It is time to brew your best beer. Brought to you by Beer Grains Supply Company, BrewTubers Online Brewers Club, Brew UK, Panhead Brewery, Tanner Ritchie, Finney's Homebrew Emporium, Brig Selve, Hackney Brewery, Hashigo Saki, Mangrove Jacks, Sprig and Fern Tavern, Yakima Valley Hops. All right, I got a real cool opportunity for you guys. Those of you who watch my live broadcast, there's something cool for you coming up. Just wait, hang on a second. First, I want to mention J. MCMLXX. This guy brought me some beers. He's he brewed the 17 IPA beer, which I'm going to be reviewing very soon, which you probably have, maybe you haven't heard of, I'm not sure. And he brought me some other beers which I shared with a neighbor and I didn't I feel bad. I didn't realize he was kind of hoping I would review them on YouTube. So, um, but I want to give him a plug because the beers were awesome. They were excellent tasting beers. My neighbor who's not a home brewer, was like, really? This is home brew? Are you serious? It was very nice to share it with somebody who's not experienced in real beer, you know? So JMCMLXX, thank you very much. And we're going to be meeting again soon. He's going to bring some more, I think he's going to bring some more beers, and I will review them, I promise, um, on Craig's Beer Reviews. All right, guys, one more thing, and please listen to this. It's very important to me, okay? Um, I do a live broadcast on Friday nights, as you know, but this is very important. There's a friend of mine who does the, what we call the sweepers or the um, radio spots, whatever you want to call them, in between the songs, you know, makes it sound professional. He's done this for me for years. I want you to be able to have a piece of his voice, and it's very familiar to you. In fact, let's listen to a couple of his sweepers, just to remind you of what he does. 17 aftershocks fell all over the globe, emanating from the Craig Chew Dungeon. Sit tight, you're in for a wild ride. Cheers, 17. Craig's playing songs from artists that still matter. Oh. You don't need to ask who's got the best tunes. You're here, ain't you? Great juice. Cheers. 17. He does awesome work for me. And if you join my broadcast every Friday night, or you know what that voice is, and if you want to have a piece of that on your phone or something like that, I got a link down below. Go and watch the video how you can get that on your phone, okay? Cheers. That's all you got to do. Down below in the description, there's a link. Just do it and watch the video. It's not very long. It's like two minutes or something like that. And uh, it's up to you, okay? He's a good friend of mine, and I'm going to plug this uh, for a few weeks because it's very important to me that this gets out there, all right? So I'm out. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'm half in the bag. I'm sorry. I've done my, done my best here uh, to, to do this, but uh, there's a lot going on here. And I've tried to organize this and edit it the best I could. But uh, hey, it's still holding the cap on it. That's not bad. This is my SJ Poor Beer. 
I hope it does well. I hope you guys like it, whoever gets one. Um, <laughs> not that you'll know which one it is, but um, I'm out. And thanks for watching Homebrew Wednesday. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. Crack open a cold one and slide into the groove with Crate Tube.